What's going on guys, it's Cooper Codes, and in this video we are building this to-do list application with SvelteKit 1.0. We can enter the name of a to-do like this, add it to our list, and you'll see we have a to-do component that gets inserted to a list of to-dos. We can also make another to-do just to show you guys that, and it will get added to our list. We can also edit to-dos, so check this out. We can press the edit button, it's then going to change to a text input, and we can say, let's say I want to listen to a coding podcast, and then we can save, and we can also check off to-dos, and you'll see if I edit and I save, that check stays there. And let's say I want to delete something off my list, I can press delete here, and it's gonna go away. This is a fully featured Svelte project that's gonna be perfect for anyone getting started with the framework. If you don't know what SvelteKit is, it's pretty much a kind of React alternative that takes away a lot of the syntax that gets put on top of React. By the end of this video, you guys will be so surprised how few lines of code it takes to make all of the functionality of this project. Let's get into the code. Firstly, we're going to go to an empty folder in Visual Studio Code, and I'm going to create our Svelte project by saying npm create svelte at latest my dash app. This is going to create our SvelteKit 1.0 project. For this project, we just want the basic skeleton project. If you want to see other functionality within SvelteKit, you can also take a look at this demo app if you want. But for this one, we're using the skeleton project. The emphasis of this tutorial is not TypeScript, so I'm going to be saying no to TypeScript, but there are going to be videos on this soon. This is just an introduction to the framework. I'm going to say yes to ESLint and yes to Prettier. This is going to be linting and formatting. I'm not going to enable Playwright for this video, so press no and no unit testing here. Now we can go into our created project by saying CD my app. And we can even see with this my app folder over here that we have our fully built SvelteKit project. We haven't installed the dependencies yet. So we're going to say npm install to install all the different dependencies that SvelteKit 1.0 needs. To run our project, we can say npm run dev dash dash space dash dash open. This is going to see what the boilerplate looks like for this application. So as you guys see, not exactly the prettiest thing you've ever seen, but we can go and take a look at where this code is coming from. We can go under the source folder, which is where we have all the different routes for our application. Under the first route, we have the plus page.svelte. This is the current HTML that's being provided to the main route that we just saw. This video is going to build a project that is specifically just in this main route. So all the coding for this video is going to be happening within this route. The app.html right here is kind of the boilerplate HTML for our entire application that all the different routes use. For example, I'm going to use some external CSS styling to the SvelteKit head. But instead of just adding a tag next to like line 6, we can go back to our route and create Svelte code inside of here. So we can just delete the boilerplate, we won't need this anymore. And we can add things to the head by saying Svelte head like this. And within this tag is all the different things we want to add to the head of our HTML. For this video, I'm going to be using an external styling called Pico CSS. So we can link to it by saying link relation is equal to style sheet, and then the href link to the style sheet. I want to make this easy for you guys. So go into the description and I'll have this link right here. This is pointing to a CSS file from Pico CSS. So what this CSS file is going to do is it's going to take all of our divs, our h1s, all the different HTML tags and put some external styling on top of them. Now we can build some of the actual components we are going to use in Svelte. So Svelte is incredibly simple because it allows us to create interfaces that are just regular HTML and CSS. For example, I'm going to make a div to kind of hold the top section of our code that shows the to-do list and also the text input. This div is going to have some styling on it. I'm going to make it have a margin zero auto, which means the margins are going to align this div block to the center of our screen. I'm going to give some padding around it of 20 pixels. And I'm also just going to give it a width of 700 pixels. I'll make a disclaimer early on. This isn't exactly a super in-depth styling tutorial. The focus is more going to be on how we can work with text values and different states of components working with Svelte later. So this styling is just some boilerplate to get started. So I'm going to make a heading two here and I'm going to have it be style is equal to text dash align center. It's going to align it to the center of the screen and it's just going to say to do list. Simple paragraph just saying enter your to do here. So this is actually going to be aligned to the left, but it looks okay, so I'm okay with that. And if we save and go to our hosted link, we can even see so far what it looks like. Looks pretty good. It says enter your to-do here. I like it. Now we're going to work on this text input right under it. So I'm going to make this a div style is equal to display flex. This is just so we can have the text input and the button right next to each other on the same line. And so the first one's going to be input type is equal to text. Super simple, just like that. And then the button is going to just say add 
like this. Let's go take a look. Looks pretty good, but the add button is kind of long. So just for the sake of simplicity, I'm just going to make it a style width of 200 pixels like this. Looks a bit better. There we go. And now we're actually going to need to make a example to do, and then we'll get into the actual JavaScript coding of this. I'm going to make a flex component here. So I'm going to say div style is equal to display flex. I'm going to align items to the baseline. So that generally means the texts of the items are aligned, but not always. I'm also going to give a width of 700 pixels for this one and then a margin zero auto. So doing the same thing from above. And so we can start by showing a to do list when it's not in the editing stage. So we can just say an input of checkbox is going to be the first thing. Then I'm going to make an H4 just showing the style is equal to flex dash grow one. This flex grow property is important because it's what's shoving the two buttons to the right of our column. And so I'm just going to say watch Cooper code. So it's going to be the name of the actual to do, which is eventually going to be from our program. But for now, I'm just going to hard code some values so we can see what it looks like. And then I'm going to make a div style of display flex, which is going to hold our two buttons. So the first button is going to say something like edit. And then the second button is going to say something like delete. Let's go see our website. All right, looks pretty good. And so just some insight as to how we can add to do's is we can take this element we just created, make another one, and you'll see we now have two different to do's. So that's how we're going to do is we're going to programmatically pretty much say, take this element, copy it over to make two different to do's, for example. So we can delete that one for now. So let's scroll back to the top of our application here and we can add in a script tag. Svelte is interesting because this script tag right here can be recognized by these two elements down here. And so for example, we can do something like let to do list. So writing in JavaScript now is equal to an empty array, which is eventually going to be an array of to do's. And we can even put in a basic, you know, starter to do for our code to look at. So the content is going to be watch this video. <laughs> and then we're going to say we're currently not editing this one. So the editing state is going to be false. And then is it checked or not? We're also going to say false. So initially it's going to be not editing and not checked. From here, we can access this to-do list from anywhere down here. For example, we can make an each loop. So we can say hashtag or pound sign each to-do list as to do. So what this is going to do is it's going to go through every single element in the to-do list. And then to get access to that element, we can go to to-do right here. We can also get the current index in the array where we're at. So Svelte is going to have an error because we want to show it which HTML element should it be creating on every single loop. So we can say end the each right here by saying slash each. So now every single index that goes through our to-do list, it's going to make this HTML element. So let's go back to our website. We can see that the watch Cooper codes is still here. So just for the sake of learning, we can add some like nonsense to our array, like one comma, two comma. So we have a total of three things in our array now. And you'll see on our website, we now have three things over here. This is because it's pretty much saying, go through every single index and in to-do list and create this HTML element. And so let's get rid of these nonsense numbers right here. And so we can access this object right here through the variable to do right here. And so we can take a look at an interesting thing called binding. So we can bind the value of checked equal to to do dot checked. And so this is saying take the checked attribute of input and bind it to the variable in our JavaScript code such as to do dot checked. So if we go to the top and set checked is equal to true, it's then going to update that in our code. And we can even see boom right here, it's going to be initially checked. The most interesting thing here is that this is actually updating in real time. So when I uncheck this, what's happening is it's actually going into this to do right here and setting the checked is equal to false. Really interesting stuff. That is what the binding does. And so we can even look at the editing here. So editing is initially false. If the person is editing, we want to show a text box to edit the text. If the person is not editing, we want to show what it currently looks like. And so you can apply that logic right here in Svelte by saying pound sign or hashtag if to do dot editing. So if this is true or if this is false is what the condition is. So if they're editing, we want to show a text box, right? Else, if they're not editing, we want to show the input and the H4. And we can end our if statement by saying forward slash if. Now it's going to yell at us. So we want to go up here and say input type is equal to text. And so to see what this looks like, we have to actually go up to the editing here and set it equal to true. 
<laughs> and so now we're permanently in editing state because this edit and delete button doesn't work right now, but we can still go in here and type just whatever we want. Now, an interesting thing we can do here is that the input has a value property, which is going to be the value of whatever is in the input. We can bind the value equal to the to do dot content. And so if the value of this text changes, it's going to be set equal to to do dot content. For example, watch this video. Imagine right here is the text input. If I were to delete like that, the actual content would get updated in real time on every single character stroke. So it would save to that, it would save to that, it would save to that. And so that's the interesting thing that this binding does is we don't have to have a state or anything crazy like in React. We can just bind it directly to the value like content here. And in that same vein, what we can do is instead of saying watch Cooper codes, which is hard coded, we can then go in and add the to do content right here. So it's going to show whatever the string is in this current object. So I can change this to something like, yep, pretty creative. We can go look at this. And although we're still in edit mode, it will initially be this is the change string. And we can even manually set editing back to false and go look at our web page again. This is the change string. There we go. So we can see that it's directly pointing to whatever the attribute is inside of here. All right, so guys, really important thing to really show you guys stuff is we need to make these buttons actually do things. And so we can actually copy this if editing right here and say, if we're editing, we want to show a button saying save because we're going to be currently editing. And then otherwise, we want to show a button that just says edit. Then we can end our if statement with that forward slash if. And so inside of here, what we can do is we can actually make a function in our JavaScript real quick where we can make a function to set the editing. So function set editing, take the I for the current index rat in our array. So for example, the first to do or the second to do is editing. So we're going to be setting it to this value here. And so we can go into our to do list like this, get the current index. So whatever to do we're pointing to dot editing is going to be equal to the is editing we pass in here. So this is going to be true or false. So are we editing or are we not? And so if we scroll back down, we can go into the save button, for example, and then we can say on click. So listen for the click event is what Svelte allows us to do is equal to going to make an arrow function like this set editing. So we're now calling a function from our script, which is set editing. And now we can pass in its parameters. For example, I for the index, because we're getting the index from up here at line 22. And if we are leaving editing, for example, we're pressing save. Once we're done editing, we want to say false because we are going to be setting it equal to the not editing state. And in that same kind of thinking, we can put this on click over here. And when we do press edit, we want to enter the editing state. So we say true. So let's go check out this functionality. All right, so we can enter in and out of editing. And if you look at this, because the value is binded, we actually can change the actual value of our object. So edit, make it a different value, if I can spell and press save and it will change that value because it's being binded we don't have to do any like setters or getters because it's being binded directly to that text input which in my opinion is really cool and you know i don't like this to do anymore so i want to delete it let's go make that functionality so on the click here i'm then going to make a delete to do which is something i haven't made yet of a current index so we can scroll up go into our script and make that function by saying function delete to do of a current index. In JavaScript, you can delete something from an array by saying to do list dot splice, take the current index and say only want to delete one from there. So the only thing at that current index is kind of how you can think about that. If you want to look into splice, you can just look up like JavaScript splice, you'll see a bunch of stuff. So this next line of code is interesting because we have to say to do list is equal to to do list to tell Svelte that we're actually updating the to do list value. And it's kind of weird logic. And just to defend myself from the programming community, there is a Svelte documentation right here that recommends you do this exactly. The issue is that Svelte only really recognizes when you reset a value to update your interface when it's being on the left being set equal to something new. So when you say to do list splice, Svelte is kind of unaware of what splice is even doing to our array. And so to kind of 
force it in Svelte's face that something has been updated, we have to do this at line 14 where we're saying, by the way, we're updating to-do list, refresh the interface. Kind of weird logic, which is why I directly reference the documentation here. That's just how it works. And it's pretty simple, honestly. And so let's go see if we can delete our to-do. All right, the moment of truth. And look at this. We're not gonna be able to add anything. So let's go make that adding functionality now. Text inputs in Svelte are so cool. And you can say let text input be equal to an empty string. And then we can bind a text input equal to this text input align seven, kind of like a use state if you're familiar with React. And so we can say, oh, this text input at the top where the user is inputting a certain to do, we can bind its value. So the value of this text input equal to the text input variable in our JavaScript. So if we ever need to access text input, we can access it in any of our functions here. And so if we want to add a to do with that input, we can say on click is equal to add to do. And so this is just different syntax as opposed to down below where I always use the arrow because we don't have any parameters. So we can go up here and make that function add to do. And so we can say to do list is equal to all the elements in to do list, which is what that dot 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 is pretty much saying is it's called the spread operator if you want to look into that. And then we're going to say add a new object on top of everything in there. So we can make an object and we can even copy this. Set the text content equal to the moment of truth, the text input. Pretty cool because this text input is always going to be binded to the value of whatever the user typed in right here. And initially editing is false and checked is false. And we can get rid of this data that we use just for testing right here and give us an empty to-do list. So let's go back to our website, make a to-do. You can check it off. You can edit the to-do. We can make another one. We can delete one. We can make another one on top of this. We can check it off. We can not check it off. We can even edit it. So, you know, if you don't want to watch me, maybe just another coding video, we can even delete the one on top. And now we only have the coding video left over. And so we have a fully functional to-do list built fully in Svelte, which is pretty legit. I've been looking at Svelte recently and guys, it really is a cool framework that allows you to do stuff in a way simpler way than React. I know I have a big React audience on this channel, so if you came from the React audience and came to this video to kind of get an understanding of Svelkit, thanks so much for watching it for that reason, because that's kind of why I made it. So, And if you're just learning Svelkit in general, hopefully this video was helpful, and thank you so much for watching.